everyone it's helen here from helen chapman handmade crafts welcome to lesson three of my stamping basics series i hope you've enjoyed the first two lessons so far if you haven't seen them pop back out and start with those the first one covers everything that you need to get started on your stamping journey the second covers stamps different types of stamps how to use them, how to choose a good stamp set to make sure you're getting value for money and a few little hints and tips along the way. Today is called Ink Explained and we're going to look at all of the different inks that Stampin' Up! supply. I'm going to talk you through how to use them, when to use them, which applications you should use which inks for and again, hints and tips, different techniques using uh, ring inkers, markers, all sorts of things. I am going to flip the camera over now and we will make a start. See you in a minute. Okay, here we are, the other way up, excellent. Right, I'll just show you which inks we're going to go through and then we'll do each one in turn. So we've got your standard classic stamping pad, which is available in 50 different colours. We have Versamark, which is sticky ink, if you like, and is used for heat embossing or tone on tone stamping. Stays on which is a solvent ink pad. We can use that for watercolour applications. Memento, great general stamp pad or for use with alcohol markers. And then in this little, <laughs> in this little bag uh, is the craft stamp pad. We're also going to have a look at stamping right markers and reinkers. Let's go back to the beginning. Most of you know about the classic stamping pad. Um, the design of the case was changed relatively recently. Uh, I'll get an old one just to show you in case you've got any of those. This is the old style and first of all we'll just quickly go through opening them because they can be a little tricky now with this old style you've got a little lip there which you can put your hand between and then the three little dots you can push and that will release it and then you flip over and lock into place and to pop it back there's a little lip there pull on that all the way to the end flip over and lock into place and the designs are such that your ink pad will always be face down when you store your actual pad itself right way up so it keeps the ink at the top of the pad ready for use that's the old style now this is the new style slightly different this time you've got the little groove there so we can pull up on that flip over slide to lock into place again you've got the little lip pull on that one all the way to the end flip over and click into place these um do stack nicely so they take up less space than the old style the other thing to mention is on the back you have these stickers and the idea is that you put them in different positions around your ink pad so that you can tell what colour you're using even when they're open. So I generally put one sticker on the end and one sticker in the little groove there. There are others you get one in your one in english one blank and then a few others in other languages but obviously the color 
is still right so if you wanted to put them on the other end of the ink pad or anything else then you can do obviously great for stamping sentiments stamping images anything like that really super versatile and there are other techniques that you can use these for which includes water coloring so i'll just give you a quick example of how to do a watercolor wash with one of these and i take a clear block and actually apply ink to the block the block becomes a kind of a makeshift palette if you like then for a wash what i would do is i would take the larger of my aqua painters and apply a reasonable amount of water to my fluid 100 cardstock then take the smaller aqua painter lift up some of the ink and apply and then you can achieve all sorts of different effects you can plop down and get the little spiky stuff you can do an actual wash you can obviously blend them you could then use your spritzer once it's dry just to lift some of that ink back off but super easy way to do watercolor with your standard classic stamping pads we won't go through general stamping with them because you've seen me do that on the other video on the stamps video now i'll just grab the knight of navy because each of these do come do have a reinker available now, it's always best to buy the reinker when you buy an ink pad. Not only does that mean that you will be able to extend the life of your ink pad, but there are some techniques that you can use the actual reinker for as well. Now, what can happen if you just buy the ink pad, it will start to dry out and you think, oh, I need a new ink pad. You might even forget that the reinkers are available and you might spend more money on a pad when you could have spent less money on a reinker. And I'll just go through how I reink my ink pads. Now this Knight of Navy is gets a lot of use generally, so it's probably about due. And what I do is squeezing the bottle, I apply the ink crisscross the pad crisscross in the other direction diagonally in both directions just so you're pretty much making sure you're covering plenty of the pad and you can see it sucks that ink up straight away and then because you'll still have some crisscrossing you might even be able to see it I take uh, just a plastic spoon, some people use their bone folder, anything like that, and just kind of massage that ink into the pad so that you don't get any spots where there's no ink. Okay, a little bit of that. And then you can just rinse, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> rinse your spoon or your bone folder underwater and that will... That will come straight off so it's as simple as that really really straightforward and that is now ready to go again next we can look at the versa mark now this we're not going to cover in great detail because there will be a whole lesson on heat embossing but this is basically a sticky ink so it dries much more slowly than the classic stamping pad. These dry really quickly because they're water-based dye. So the paper, the cardstock, 
just soaks it up and it dries really quickly. The Versamark is designed to not dry quickly and to remain sticky to give you time to apply your embossing powder and heat emboss. The other thing that you can do with these is tone on tone. Um, let's just do one quickly onto a black and we'll take a might not show up perfectly on black but is that catching the see that catching the light so you'll just get that subtle effect in the background and obviously you can use that then on any color of cardstock okay as i say we'll cover versa mark and heat embossing in a future lesson so we'll pop that to one side for now next we have stays on which is a solvent based ink pad um, you can use this for water coloring i.e stamping an image which you will then watercolor as opposed to using the ink for watercoloring which we did a second ago it can be used on almost any surface it's not recommended for fabric but you can use it on window sheet and that sort of thing it's not recommended that you use it on clear stamps um it it can be a bit aggressive on them and you do get a specific cleaner so you get a stays on cleaner for it now i confess i have used it on clear stamps and <clears throat> what i tend to do is just make sure as soon as i've used it i give the stamp a quick rinse under the tap and then use the stays on cleaner as well now as i've said it's not recommended for clear stamps so it's entirely up to you whether you take the chance on that but we'll have a look at using it for water coloring now we need an open image really don't we oh that one will show us the concept so I'll take this background pattern image and I'll stamp that onto a piece of Fluid 100. It does have the little cover on and it does smell of marzipan. <laughs> you know, just a little side note there. Okay. So we can bring that back in again and we can take the aqua painter. I'm not sure what I've done with my smaller aqua painter, which is bizarre because we had it seconds ago. So we'll go with the larger one and you can see that you can watercolor on that there's no bleeding of the ink it stays absolutely perfect so stays on great for watercoloring i'm just going to give that a quick dab with my stays on cleaner i'm just gonna get a bit of a wipe over just like so and give that a bit of a dab on my chamois bear with me a second 
okay um yeah so this comes in jet black or saddle brown and don't forget to grab a bottle of the specific cleaner for that next we have memento and this is tuxedo black and this is great if you want to use your alcohol markers so your stamping blends and you can take a scrap of this is the shimmery white and we'll take this kind of flooring type image I suppose and I'm choosing images where I'm going to be deliberately going over the lines of the image so that you can see that there is no bleeding as long as you're using the right combination of ink for for the technique that you're using we'll take a couple of stamping blends so here we've got the dark and light soft suede and we can just use the brush nib and again you can see that that is colouring over that image. There's no bleeding of the ink at all. That's just colouring absolutely perfectly. Also, your go-to just for stamping sentiments in black or anything like that also comes with a re-inker as does stays on i don't think i mentioned that did i and that's a mark all of the inks that are available through stamping up can't have a re-inker available so always great to buy the re-inker at the same time the final ink pad that we're going to look at is the Whisper White Craft Stamping Pad. Now this is a pigment ink and this dries quite slowly because it sits on top of the cardstock rather than soaking into the cardstock. Obviously better for dark coloured cardstock it's not going to show up on, on anything too light and depending on how much you ink it up you're either going to get an actual white image or you're going to kind of get a toned down version of your cardstock color i hope that makes sense so let's give it a go and see so It's the easiest way to explain, isn't it? Okay, so we've stamped in white there. Now, these this, these pads do dry out really quite quickly. So I keep mine in one of those little Ziploc bags. And as you might have been able to see there, I've only inked up a small section of it. So I don't use too much re-inker. And I tend to re-ink it Depending on how often I'm using it, I might even re-ink it every time I use it. But just re-ink the size of the pad that you want to stamp. Just so that you're being economical with your re-inker. And you can see as it dries, it just kind of tones down your cardstock. So you've got sort of a grey effect. Want a bit of a clean. So 
you might find you need to rinse those under the tap as well um, with them being a bit sort of sticky the chamois doesn't tend to take it all off next we can look at the stamping right markers now these have two ends you've got the brush tip and the fine nib oh, i should mention i forgot to mention when you're using your stamping blends um it will bleed through your cardstock so make sure you don't do this on top of your a different project or a good, good piece of cardstock make sure you're doing it onto your grid paper or a bit of scrap okay right so you can do different things with the stamping right markers obviously you can write your message inside your card in a coordinating pen which always looks really nice if you want to personalize you can obviously write on the front of your card if you're good at brush lettering you know you can create some lovely effects with that if you've watched others of my videos my favorite technique with the stamping right markers is the splatter and you take the marker just pop the brush end into the cap and flick And you can see there, you get that really nice splatter effect. And I love using it when, you know, you've, you've got a card and you want some white space in there. You don't want to put a massive background pattern stamp or anything like that in there, but you, you think it's going to be a little bit too stark. Something like a little bit of splatter from a coordinating marker always looks really good. You can stamp with them as well, which is really great. Uh, let's take let's take an image from well, let's take a sentiment from Timeless Tulips, and using the side of your brush nib, you're just gonna. Just gently rub your marker over the surface of the stamp. And there we have it. So a lot of people don't realise that you can use them for stamping. Um, but it's really good, really quick. Obviously, if you don't have, if you've got colours of markers that you don't have in ink pads, then that's really great. You can also, if we take, uh, I don't know, what should we, what should we use, what should we use? Let's go for gorgeous grape. So you could kind of colour the first bit with your melamambo, and then you could take your gorgeous grape. And you've created a multicolour sentiment. Of course, you can do that with normal stamps. So that would look great on your tulips. You could ink the bottom in one colour and have it fading into another colour. Super, super tip, that one. Really useful. Um, they are also refillable with caution <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say i'm gonna leave it entirely up to you whether you take the chance but on the brush nib end you can actually use tweezers to pull out the brush nib you can then use your standard ink refills to pop a couple of drops in and refill them Again, entirely up to you whether you want to take the chance of pulling your brush nibs out, but it can be done. So I wanted to tell you that is an option. Um, 
entirely up to you whether you want to take <laughs> whether you want to take the chance but it is doable so really great tips for the stamping right marker really love those um do store them on their sides so store them flat don't store them upright in a pot or something like that because you're going to end up with all the ink at one end and if you want to use the other nib then you're going to think that it's dry when it isn't so store them flat and you've got the best chance of there being ink available to both ends of the marker right so i think we've covered all of the ink pads and the markers and we've seen some different tips for using the markers in different ways um you can if if you prefer and you're only going to do a little bit, you can scribble these on to a block and pick them up for watercolouring. But obviously you're not going to be able to get as much ink that way as you would by using the block as a palette for from the ink pad. You can see the difference in the intensity of the color that you can get there but if you want something really light and you just want to fill a small space then that is definitely definitely a possibility um what we'll do now is we'll just run through a few different ways that you can use the refills on their own uh, we'll take our melon mambo We've covered how to re-ink an ink pad, which is the obvious application for them. Another option, which is very similar, is you can buy uninked stamping spots, which are small ink pads. I've not got one to hand, but they're probably they're smaller than that. So they're probably sort of that kind of square. Um, and you can ink those up and what you can do is then you can take them if you're crafting on the move you know you can take a few on holiday if you don't want to pack the um, full size pads you can also just use those if you don't want to buy the full size ink pads you can buy a whole load of stamping spots and the reinkers and do it like that there is a selection of stamping spots available in the new annual catalogue, so look out for that as well. Let's talk about the other things we can do. We can just put a blob onto our block. We can pick that up to watercolour as we've seen with the other techniques. So you're going to get a really intense colour. You can then spritz that. I'm going to make sure I'm pointing it in the right direction this time. I did a video the other day and I had my spritzer pointing off at all angles. It didn't go well. Like that. And some people actually then let that move around and actually use that as a stamp and you can imagine you can get some really lovely backgrounds from that once you've only got a little bit left you can get a little bit more out of it by spritzing again so you can get some really nice background effects with that you can actually put a few drops into your spritzer mix it and spritz directly on to your fluid 100 um the shimmer shimmery white takes water quite well too the thick whisper white takes water relatively well I wouldn't use the standard Whisper White. 
You can then spritz through masks or just spritz for a background pattern or anything like that. You can also mix the ink from your reinker with texture paste. Let me see if I've got some at hand and we could have a quick a quick look. Yeah, so I've got a little bit of I've got some shimmery white here. Uh let's think what we can use to uh What I'll do is I'll just move some of this and do it directly onto my glass mat. Try and pop it somewhere. Yeah, I'll do it over here and then you'll still be able to still be able to see it. And then I'll worry about cleaning it up later. <laughs> right. You see that? So I'm only going to use a teensy bit just to show you the principle. And then you can pop a drop of your reinker in there and just mix that through and Suddenly, you've got a gorgeous texture, coloured texture paste. Now, I'll grab a mask. These are actually retired, but I'll just grab one just to give you an idea. And then, and it does look fabulous in this Melon Mambo. Really beautiful colour. Love it. Look at that. Now that makes me happy. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's one of those techniques where you think, oh, I must do that more, must do that more. Right, I'm going to just hide that under there and worry about cleaning it up after we've finished here. Yeah, so that is mixing it with um, your texture paste. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. You know my next card is going to have that on it, don't you now? Right. Other uh, techniques. You you can actually use um, baby wipes. Now, I'm not a massive fan of baby wipes. So, I don't use this technique. But I thought I'd share it with you just in case you wanted to. But you can take a baby wipe. You can apply re -inker. And you can apply a few different colours. And obviously the water, the moisture in the baby wipe will take up that ink. And basically you will create kind of a multicolour stamp pad basically. So then if you've got a largest image, uh, you can put your stamp into the baby wipe. The stamp will pick up the different colours of ink and you can use that to stamp with. That is an option. Um, you can do a similar thing with shaving foam. Now, I mean, I like getting messy, but that just sounds a little bit too much to me. <laughs> um, I've seen people do it. I've never tried it. It looks good, but I'm not convinced the mess is worth it. You make up your own minds on that one. Um, similar thing, you spread some shaving foam out onto a glass mat or maybe your silicon craft sheet something like that you put a few blobs of reinker either just one color or multi-colors you kind of spread it about a bit and then you pop your card into the shaving foam and you get some really cool patterns it does look really good don't get me wrong it looks great but it is messy um, another thing some people do is stamp using window sheets, which, so you could take something like this, you could spritz on there and then you use a window sheet to pick up 
the ink and you get all sorts of different effects. I'm just going to plunk this down because I think it looks cool. <laughs> That's another option. Um, you can do something similar with cling film. You can just damp a piece of cling film, put a few blobs of re scrunch it up. Lay it out again and put your cardstock in. And basically, you know, it's just about being inventive with how you pick up the ink and lay the ink back down again. I've seen people do uh, techniques with bubble wrap, you know. So just use whatever you've got and have a play. I mean, you're going to end up with some beautiful effects like this. <laughs> I mean... I think I'm going to turn this into some sort of picture. <laughs> I think it's fabulous. Um, so the 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 sort of takeaway message, I guess, from today's lesson is buy the reinkers because you don't want to forget they exist and buy a new ink pad because you know. You're, you're going to be wasting money. But also because you can do some fabulous techniques and you can try some new stuff and just have a play. And, you know, I think these are sort of £3.50 each and you can hardly tell we've used any today. I've already inked up this ink pad before. They last for ages and you can do so many different techniques with them it's really really fabulous they're great value for money those so whenever you're buying an ink pad pop the re into your basket as well that's my top tip for today um there is a blog post to go along with this video as usual i'll put the address the link for that in the description of the video below here uh, head on over there that is really just a bit of a recap and if you forget anything it's probably easier just to have a quick look at that rather than go through this whole video again if you've got any questions or comments please do get in touch i'm more than happy to answer them for you if i can if i can't i'll do my very best to find out the answer um, you can contact me again via my website. My website is papercraftlife.com. You can take a look on there. There's a contact me page. Um, you can request Stampin' Up! catalogues from there. You can join my team from there. You can have a look at the inspiration on my blog. Just, just go and have a look and have a little browse round. Um, but particularly if you've got any questions or comments, you can use the contact form on there um the next lesson lesson four i will be covering cardstock and we'll talk about the different types of cardstock we've mentioned a few of them today um, we'll go into a bit more detail on the different types of cardstock different weights that sort of thing um and pattern paper so we'll cover cardstock and pattern paper uh, different ways you can use the designer series paper uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to sharing that one with you as well I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it's been useful I hope that I've shown you something that you hadn't thought of or maybe had heard of before but had forgotten about and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson thanks for watching see you soon bye